Okay. What we've got here is practice quiz 7.1 to 7.2. Now, if you can't find this paper, don't have this paper, please don't worry. I've written the matrices up here, and we're going to use those um, for all the problems, I think, we'll use, do something with all of those matrices. Yep. So I need you to just make sure you have a piece of paper and you have those written down. If you have this particular practice quiz, that's great. But it is no need to stress. Please, please, please just write these matrices down and let's do some stuff with them. So the first problem we're going to do is A plus B. Now, I do not have a whole lot of room, so I will be erasing these as I do them pretty much um, because I want to leave the matrices up there. So, remember, you can always rewind, replay, whatever you want to do. But step one here, problem one, we're going to add A and B. Now, I want you to look carefully at A. What are the dimensions of matrix A? The dimensions of matrix A are two by two. Two rows, two columns. What are the dimensions of matrix B? Two rows, three columns. Wait a minute. What is the rule for addition? The only way that you can add matrices is if they have the same dimensions. These two matrices do not have the same dimensions, so therefore, they cannot be added. They cannot be added because they do not have the same dimensions. If you haven't yet written down the rules for adding and subtracting matrices, please make a note of it, maybe right here on this paper, that they cannot be added unless they have, or subtracted, they can't be added or subtracted unless they have exactly the same dimensions. All right, now we're gonna do 2A. Little vocabulary review. Two is referred to as a scalar. A scalar is a real number. So we have a real number times a matrix. A real number times matrix A. This is always doable, kids. It doesn't have anything to do with dimensions. If you have a scalar and you gotta multiply it times a matrix, you're just going to sort of distribute it. You're going to take 2 times everything in there. So your answer is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8. And that is the answer to the question. 2 times every single number in there. Don't change the order. Don't mess it up at all. Just take 2 times every single number in there. Now, the next thing we're going to do, and again, we're just using these matrices over and over again. We're going to do A times B. Now, that means I'm going to take 1, 2, 3, 4 times negative 1, 1, 4, 0, 3, 2. And I'm going to get an answer, maybe. Before I start in, we have to make sure we can multiply. Well, we already figured out what the dimensions are. What is the rule for multiplication? The rule for multiplication is different than the rule for addition and subtraction. What is the rule for multiplication? The rule is that these two have to match. Oh my golly, they do. So this is going to be a possible problem. I am going to be able to multiply these. And when I multiply them together, my answer will be a 2 by 3. So the inside dimensions match. Your answer is the outside dimensions. So you're going to end up with two rows and three columns. Rows go across, kids. So see how I have a finger here and a finger here? There's two rows. But there's three columns. This is really hard for me to do. I need three fingers to cover that one, that one, and that one. So it's a two by three matrix. Now, the numbers I'm about ready to put in here are not part of the matrix, the matrix itself. 
They are simply my code numbers to help me figure out what it is I'm supposed to be doing. This guy, I got to find this number right here. He is the 1-1 one, one spot because he is in row 1, column 1. This number is not part of the matrix. This is not a fraction. I'm just putting my little code in there to remind myself that that's how I'm finding the number. This one is row 1, column 2, row 1, column 3. Row two, column one, column two, column three. So every number in this row is a row one. Every number here is a row two. This is column one, column two, column three. Now I do that because in order to fill in these blanks, I have to multiply a row so I have to multiply one of these times a column, one of these. So I pick one row and one column to multiply. Now in order to know which row and which column, I look at my code numbers. So I'm going to take row one, column one, row one, column one. So I'm going to write down row one, one, two. And then next to it, I'm going to write column 1, negative 1, 0. So 1, 2 are the numbers from, col or from row 1. And negative 1, 0 are the numbers from column 1. So I'm going, to add, I'm going to multiply each pair and add. So negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. All right? I'll do one more, and then we'll see how many you can get. So I'm going to multiply here, row 1, column 2. So row 1, column 2. So I have my 1 and my 2. That's row 1. But now I need 1 and 3, because that is column 2. So 1 and 6, 1, 6, that makes a 7. Now, take a minute, see if you can do the same thing to fill in those other ones. Okay, how far did you get? Row one, column three. Did you get eight? Because you have row one is one, two, column three is four, two. So there's four plus four, that's eight. Then you moved on to row two, which is three, four. So you have your three and your four. And now column one, we're adding those, so that's negative three. And then we have three, four again, but this time it's one, three. And then we have three, four, and row three, or column three, I mean column three, this is row two, column three. So we have our three and our four times our 4 and our 2. So, oh golly, that, I think that's 20. All right. Now, we've done a lot of these. We've practiced um, several times. I want to just stop for a second, and I'm just going to pick one of the numbers and go through very, very carefully how we got it. So if you're having trouble, I need you to pay really, really close attention and I'm going to work on getting this 15 right here. I'm going to show you very slowly and carefully where that 15 comes from. If you got the hang of this, just mute me or something. Skip ahead. Um, but I want to go through really carefully where that 15 came from. So if you're not getting these numbers, um, you really, really, really need to pay attention now, okay? So I'm going to go back to my original 
snake sheet. I'm going to erase that because we're going to pretend we don't know what it is. And we're going to go through how we get that number. All right. Now, that number is in the second row, second column. That's the position of that number. So to fill the second row, second column, I am going to use the second row and the second column. We only use rows of the first matrix and columns of the second. So your row is coming from the first one, either row one or row two, and your column is coming from the second one. So I am gonna multiply three, four times one, three. I write down the three and the four, spread them apart. That's the three and the four right there. I just write them down. Right next to those numbers, I put the one and the three. These are gonna get multiplied. So three times one is three, four times three is 12. And then I add those and that is where the 15 came from. Okay, next problem is A plus 2D. Now, a little bit ago, we had a multiplication problem. Um, or excuse me, an addition problem, but it wasn't possible because the two matrices we were trying to add didn't have the same dimensions. So let's check these. What are the dimensions of matrix A? Well, we already figured it out. A is two by two. What are the dimensions of D? Oh, D is also two by two. Two rows, rows go sideways like bleachers. Columns go up and down. So there's two rows and there's two columns. Now, they match, so therefore, we are going to be able to do this problem. So we're going to take matrix A, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're going to add it to 2 times D. Okay? So we got 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to add 2 times D. Now, what is 2 times D going to look like? 2 times D, remember, we take 2 times everything in there. So it's going to be 2, 4, negative 2, 10. And now we're going to add those together. And when we add, I'm out of room, of course. I'm going to write it here. I'll do it in a different color. I'm going to write my answer up here. When we add, we do an entry by corresponding entry. So we're going to add this guy and this guy. So 1 and 2 gives me 3, and I put it in that same spot right there in the upper left corner. Now we get the upper right corner. I'm going to add those two. So 2 and 4, that's going to give me a 6. Now I'll add these two, and that will give me a 1. How about this color coding? And then 4 and 10 give me a 14. So this colorful matrix here is the answer to the question. All right. Next problem, this is all review stuff, kids. This is all practice for a possible quiz at some point. The next problem says C times B. This is another multiplication problem. We want to take C times B. Now, before I write all that out, I want to make sure I can do the problem. So remember how we multiply. What are the dimensions of matrix C? Matrix C has how many rows 
and how many columns? Well, matrix C has three rows and three columns. So I am multiplying a three by three times B, which is a two by three. Now, guys, is that possible? Can I multiply those? No, because the rule states that those two numbers have to match. The inside two numbers have to match. If they do not match, you cannot multiply. If you haven't written that down, would you please? If these two numbers don't match, don't try to multiply because it's not going to be possible. All right, now we have this one. This is a subtraction problem. All right, now the rule for subtraction is just like the rule for addition. If we're gonna be able to do this problem, the two matrices must be exactly the same size. So what are the dimensions of A? Two by two. Two by two. What are the dimensions of D? Two by two. So guess what? We can do the problem. So here's my A. I'm gonna subtract my D. And I'm going to be really careful when I do this because i got some negatives in there. i got to make sure I'm paying attention to that. I'm going to subtract. And I'll get my colors back out because this is one where we can, again, color code by position. So we look at those two and subtract them. So 1 minus 1 is 0. Notice I'm doing, this is the upper lefts. And I'm putting this in the upper left. Everything lines up perfectly. 2 and 2, oh my gosh, 2 minus 2 is another 0. Okay, this one's not going to be 0. So this one, now watch it. It's 3 minus negative 1. 3 minus negative 1 is 4. 3 minus negative 1. Remember, double negative, make it positive. And then 4 minus 5. And 4 minus 5 is negative 1. All right. All right, next we're going to do the determinant of C. The determinant of C. So that will be written, I'm going to back this up just a little bit. <clears throat> So that will be written like this. Now, one thing um, that I know I talked about in the notes for this, but haven't said a lot since then is, remember, you cannot do determinants unless the matrix is square. Is this a square matrix? Is C a square matrix? Yes, it is. What does it mean to be square? To be square, it means that you have the same number of rows as columns. So this matrix is a 3 by 3. It is square. This is square. This is not square. This is square. So if we're square, we can find the determinant. So remember this procedure. We take the first two columns, so 1, 3, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 4. We take the first two columns, 1, 3, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 4, and we recopy them in order over here. So the first one comes first and the second one comes second. Then we start right here, look where I'm pointing, and we multiply those together. So when I multiply all three of those numbers, that gives me a zero. And then I multiply all three of those numbers. A negative one times a one times a negative one. That gives me a one. 
and then a 1 times 3 times 4, that gives me a 12. And then I add those up. So I got a 13. A 0, a 1, and a 12. That gives me a 13. Then I go the other direction. So here I have a 0. Got to stay organized, guys. You guys that are messy, this isn't going to work. You're going to have to be neat. Multiply here, we get 4. And multiply here, I get negative 6. Now I'm going to add those up. So what do I get when I add a 0 and a 4 and a negative 6? Well, I get a negative 2. Now, do you remember what you do with those two numbers? You subtract, right, you subtract the first one minus the second one. So we take 13 minus negative 2, and that, my friends, is 15, which is the answer to the problem. Again, you know, lots of examples of this on video. Go back, rewatch, redo, do this one again. You gotta practice, practice, practice till you have these steps sorted out. It's really easy. You just, there's just a lot to remember. Okay, now we wanna find the determinant of D. Well, if you're paying attention, you know you can't do that. Why can't we find the determinant of D? I hope you're all saying, it's not square. Yes, it's not square. If it's not square, you cannot find its determinant. There are a couple of more um, determinant problems on this paper that I'm gonna do in a second. But before I erase these matrices, um, <coughs> to give myself some more room, I do want to do one more thing. So let's add in, if you're using the paper, this one's not on the paper. If you're not using the paper, it doesn't make any difference, just write it down. I want you to find A inverse, the inverse of matrix A. This is good review. We're finding the inverse of matrix A. So you need to dig back in your memory, maybe start looking at your notes. This is a two-step process. What, is, what are the two steps that we have to follow? Well, the first step is to find the determinant. So this one's a little easier to find the determinant. It's just a little two by two right here. To find the determinant, remember, we multiply one times four. We multiply three times two. So I multiply these two, I multiply these two, and then I subtract them. So I get four minus six, which is negative two. Now hang on to that. Now you're gonna build a new matrix. So that step one is find the determinant. One times four minus three times two. Now step two is build this new matrix. To build the new matrix, remember, it's real simple, no math involved. You just flip-flop these two. So you put the four here and the one here. Look where my fingers are. Flip-flop those two numbers. And then on, on these two right here, positives become negative and negatives become positive. They change their signs. So they stay put. You're not moving them. That stays two and that stays three, but they become negative. So you find your determinant, you make this new matrix, and then you remember what you do? You divide all of these by the determinant. So I'm going to put them all over negative 2. And then I'm going to clean it up, and that's going to be my answer. So 4 over negative 2, negative 2 over negative 2. 
negative 3 over negative 2, and negative 1 over negative, or 1 over negative 2. Remember, the negative can go either spot, doesn't matter. In a fraction, the negative can go on the top or the bottom. And that is the inverse. Before um, I erase all this, let's go ahead and find the inverse of matrix D, since we have it up here. Let's find D inverse. Now, just went through this. So you know what you need to do, right? You need to first of all find the determinant of matrix D. So the determinant of matrix D will be, remember, 1 times 5, negative 1 times 2, subtracted. So it's the determinant of a 2 by 2 is multiply here, multiply here, and subtract. And you always start here first. So we have 5 minus negative 2, so it's 7. This determinant is 7. Okay, now we build our new matrix. And to build your new matrix, remember, look where I'm pointing, these two numbers, the first two that you multiplied here, those two numbers simply switch places. So 5, 1. These two, the second numbers you multiplied, if they're negative in the original, they become positive. If they're positive in the original, they become negative. So I left them where they were. I just made that a negative 2 and that a positive 1. And now I put the two steps together. So I simply divide all of the numbers in this new matrix by 7. And actually, I don't think there's any cleaning up to do here, but I'm going to recopy it so it looks a little better. Be 5 sevenths, negative 2 sevenths, 1 seventh, and 1 seventh. And that green matrix right there is the inverse of matrix D. Again, those are, these are extra problems that aren't on any sheet anywhere, but it's good review. Okay, now there are a couple more on the sheet I'm looking at, which is the, the original sheet I had out here. It's called um, Practice Quiz 7172. couple more we haven't done yet. So one of them is this determinant. Which we've already done one, so this should not be a challenge. And the other problem is this determinant. Okay. All right, here we go. What's our strategy for finding the determinant of a three by three matrix? I hope, hope, hope you're already writing down these first two columns. So this is column one, I recopy it. This is column two, I recopy it. Now, I'm gonna start right here always start right here and I'm going to multiply those three numbers together. One. I'm going to multiply these three numbers together. Four times two times zero. Zero. I'm going to multiply these three numbers together. Zero times anything, zero. And now I'm going to add those up and get one. 
So all of these gave me one. Now, let's go the other way. So now I go here. This is the second step. Multiply zero. Multiply one times two times one, two. Multiply one times negative one times four, negative four. And add these up. So 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. Now the final step. Take the two answers that you got. The red one is first. Must, this is first. So we have 1 minus negative 2. So the answer is 3. 1 minus negative 2. Well, this one's a cinch. A little two by two. Always start here, just like this one. Always start in the same spot. But now we only have one multiplication to do. It's three. And we only have one this way. It's negative two. So three, one times three, three. Negative one times two, negative two. And then we subtract those. Just like we subtracted these, we subtract these. So we have 3 minus negative 2, so that determinant is 5. Okay? All right. Sorry to get my big head right in the way. Now, I'd like to just pause me for a second and go find your determinant and inverse practice packet that we've been working on. And I want you to go to the linear programming problems in that packet, go to the linear programming problems, and we're gonna look at problem number four. Okay, we're gonna look at problem number four. So just pause for a second, go get that paper, because you really should be using a paper for this. These linear programming things are quite involved. And we're gonna do one right now since we're in practice mode. All right, so here we go. We're on uh, linear programming worksheet. We're on problem number four. We're working our way through this packet. May or may not do all of them, but we're doing a bunch of them. So we got pages, we got our fixed interval. Cost. We have brochures, flyers, and total. And we want to max or min something. All right, so this is problem number four on the linear programming worksheet that is on the determinant and inverse practice sheet. I'm just throwing this in as some extra review. All right, so here we go. Manager of a travel agency is printing brochures and flyers. Each brochure costs eight cents to print. So 0.08, eight cents for a brochure. And each flyer costs four cents to print. A brochure requires three pages. A flyer requires two. The manager does not want to use more than 600 pages. So the total pages have to be 600 or less. And we need at least 50 brochures and at least 150 flyers. 
how many of each should we print to minimize the cost? So this problem is asking us for a minimum, okay? So the first thing we have to do is identify our variables. Let's let x be the number of brochures. And we'll let y be the number of wires. Okay, that just sort of makes sense, doesn't it? To let brochures be x and flyers be y. Now, this fixed interval thing, be careful. Uh, the manager, oh wait, wait. She needs at least 50 brochures. So that means whatever x is, it's bigger than or equal to 50. At least 50 brochures means X has to be bigger than or equal to 50. That isn't really an interval, but that certainly is a constraint, isn't it? And then we need at least 150 flyers. So I'm not sure about using the word interval there, but that doesn't matter. Um, we have to establish the constraints of the problem. So she needs to make at least 50 X's and at least 150 Y's. So that means X is bigger than 50 or equal to 50 and Y is bigger than or equal to 150. Okay, now these, these are blank. Don't worry about it. We don't, we have not done a single one of these problems or we filled in every box. Do not worry about it. Fill in everything that they give you. Okay, now how do I find the cost? What is my total cost gonna be? Well, right here, eight cents for every X, so 0.08X, and four cents for every Y, 0.04Y. And this time I'm gonna be minimizing. So those of you that have been following along and doing all the practice problems, we've done a ton of them, know that at some point, we're going to be plugging numbers into there. And all our other problems, we've looked for the biggest answer. This time, we're going to look for the littlest. But before we get that far, we need to fill in our constraints. So we got some of them. We know x has to be bigger than or equal to 50. We know y has to be bigger than or equal to 150. Now, we know we can't have more than 600 pages. So what is that inequality going to look like? Three x's plus two y's has to be less than or equal to 600. Now look at the problem again carefully. It says you cannot have more than 600 pages. So however many pages you print, it has to be less than or equal to 600. Now the two freebies that I tell you, you can always write down x greater than or equal to zero, y greater than or equal to zero. You do not have to write those down this time because look what you've already said. You've already said X is bigger than 50. Obviously, if X is bigger than 50, it's bigger than 100. I'm not marking that wrong, but you don't have to write it down. You can if you want. Okay, so now you know what happens next. Now we're gonna do some graphing. So we have our handy dandy graph down there. And as we have discussed over and over, Feel free to either expand your graph by extending the lines or changing the scale to accommodate big numbers. Now, these are really big numbers. Um, so I'm probably, I'm thinking about using a scale Even a scale of uh, 10 is not going to work. So why don't I use a scale of, um, I'll just use 50. I'll just use a scale of 50. So on my grid, I am going to let every box be 50. So this first one, I'm going to graph this first one right here in purple. Notice that it only has an X. Remember, oops, sorry, I keep wiggling the iPad. 
Remember, if it only has an X, now you can't even see the whole thing. Sorry about this. If it only has an X, then that means we only plot it on the X axis. So since each of my boxes is 50, I'm going to be right here, right here. And that is the point 50 comma 0. And I'm going to draw a line straight up. Now, I'm not going to shade right now. I'm just going to remember that I am looking at everything to the right of this line. If I shade, it's going to get really, really messy. So I want everything to the right of this line. X is greater than 50, so that means it's everything to the right of my purple line. Okay? Now, I'll do this one in green. That has only a Y, so I'm only going to be on my Y axis. And it's 150, so since my scale is 50, I'm going to go up 3. 50, 50, 100, 150. So that's the point 0, 150. And I'm going to draw a line straight across. It's supposed to be a straight line. I didn't do such a good job. And since the equation is greater than, I will be shading above the green line. So remember, we're to the right of the purple and above the green. So, so far, we are looking at this area of the graph. Okay? We're to the right of the purple and above the green. Now, I'm going to do this one. Now, remember, when it has X's and Y's, we're going to cover up one at a time. We're going to cover up one at a time and solve for the other one. So, if I cover up X, it says 2Y equals 600. So y equals 300. So I'm going to go up my y axis to 300. Now remember, we're counting by 50s. So we're going up the y axis, counting by 50s. 50, 100, 150, 200, 300. Right there it is. Label that point 0, 300. Okay? So there it is. Now I'm going to do the same thing covering up y. If I cover up y, then I have the equation 3x equals 600. Now, kids, I've talked about this before. This is a review problem. We've already been through all of this. I know that's a less than. We use the less than for shading only. Otherwise, we're thinking of it as an equals. So we're going to cover this up, and it says 3x equals 600, which means x equals 200. But I am counting my 50s. So on my x-axis, 50, 100, 150, 200. So it's right there. And that is the point 200, comma, 0. Now, once you get those two dots on there, you're going to go ahead and draw in your line. Now, Remember, it's kind of hard to tell because my shading is so poor, but remember, we are only looking at areas to the right of the purple and above the green. Now we're going to put in less than the red. So guys, you are only looking at that little triangle right there. You have to be above the green line, you have to be to the right of the purple line, and you have to be below the red line. So we're looking at this triangle right here. Now, 
that triangle has, like all triangles, three vertices. I'm going to go ahead and mark them. So see those big black dots? Those are the vertices of the triangle. Now, you see this one right here? That dot right there is formed by the purple and the green coming together. So the purple has an X of 50, and the green has a Y of 150. So that point right there is 50, 150. Please do not be confused by that. That point is where your purple and your green come together. Anything on the purple has an X of 50. So that has an X of 50. So does that one. It's on the purple. Anything on the Y, or on the green, I mean, anything on the green has a Y of 150. So this point right here has an X of 50 and a Y of 150. So it is the point 50 comma 150. Now, this one right here has an X of 50. How do I know? It's on the purple line. And if you're on the purple line, your X is 50. But it's also on the red line. That point right there is on the red line. So on the red line, we know that 3x plus 2y equals 600. But we already know that for that point right there, x is 50. So I'm going to put 50 in here. Use a calculator if you need to. So 150 plus 2y equals 600. So 2y equals, what is that, 450? And y is going to equal 225. So we have the point 50 comma 225. Okay, so one more time. If you're not getting this, back it up. Repeat. Any point on the purple has an X value of 50. That's the equation of the purple line. 50. That means, that means that that point right there has an X of 50. Any point on the red line has to work in the red equation. So if I know X is 50, I'm just going to plug 50 into the red equation and figure out what my Y is. So assuming I did the arithmetic correct, it's 225. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing for this point, except this point is on the green which means that its Y coordinate is 150. If you are on the green, your Y is 150. Anything on the green has a Y of 150. So this point has a Y coordinate of 150. It's also on the red line though. And the red line has to fit this equation. So I know I know that 3x plus 2y has to be 600. And for this point right here, I know that the y is 150. So 3x plus 2 times 150 equals 600 which means 3x plus 300 equals 600, which means 3x equals 300, which means x equals 
100. So that's the point 100 comma 150. Now, I got a mess here. I'm going to have to erase some stuff. We want to minimize the cost. So what we are going to do now Here's the cost right here. We want to minimize that. So you are going to take each of these points, X and Y, and plug them in. So for this one, it'll be 0 0.08 times 50 plus, I'm going to go ahead and erase all this, plus 0 0.04 times 150. And you're going to figure out what that is. And then you're going to do 0 0.08 times 50 plus 0 0.04 times 225. And then you're going to do 0 0.08 times 100 plus 0 0.04 times 150. All right, so here we go. Just typing it in on the calculator. These are going to be dollars now. This is the cost. Oh, I wish you were here to check me. I hope I'm doing this right. So again, we're just taking each of those vertices that we found, each of these big black points that form the corner of that feasible region, that triangle right there. We're taking each of those X's and Y's and plugging them into our cost equation. And this time we want the minimum cost. So I guess that's 10 came from this point. So we're going to write down, she should print 50 brochures and 150 flyers for a cost of $10. Voila. Practice work completed. Good job.